So. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, wait. This is not uncomfortable, but it's very weird. This is the thing? This is the one. Absolutely. And now it almost couldn't have happened in a better way. Where did you want to be? So it was just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> am I funny? Now if I go over here, am I still funny? Better strategy. Yeah, no way better strategy. I never thought about that. Yeah, I don't see it five years from now that you're not my most famous friend. You really have to commit to something. Good to have some of the you. That's that cool. That was really cool. Yeah, it might be cool. This is On The Cusp. Hello, I'm Ben Green and welcome to On The Cusp. This week my guest is Hannah Kosalka. She is an improviser on the brand new UCB mess hall team Junk Science. She's an actress that can be seen in shows like True Blood and The Fosters. And she was almost the Pink Power Ranger but you'll have to listen to the show to find out more. A quick reminder that On the Cusp can now be found on Stitcher and iTunes. If you like the show, consider rating or reviewing it. If you do either of those things, I'd be very thankful. This episode is sponsored by Thai Pepper at 6219 Franklin Avenue in Los Angeles. At Thai Pepper, you can get a plate of beef fried rice, pork fried rice, and shrimp fried rice for under $20. Those prices are hard to beat. So find your way over to 6219 Franklin, right next to the 101 Coffee Shop. Thai Pepper. If I had to choose between Thai Cobb's autograph and eating at Thai Pepper, I'd always choose Thai Pepper. So Hannah Kasalka and I have a lot of friends in common, and we've spent a lot of time in the same places over the last few years. Uh, but this was the first chance I got to sit down with her and have a really good, long conversation. And I had a lot of fun talking to her. One thing Hannah and I talked about in this interview was even though she's in the post-college period of her life, she still goes out on auditions to play high school students a lot, and she plays a high school student on the TV show The Fosters. I'm in a similar boat to Hannah because I'm 28 years old, but a lot of the time people think that I'm more like 19 or 20, and sometimes people think that I'm a lot younger than I actually am, and it can get a little bit weird. Like this one time recently, I was auditioning for a Nickelodeon show, and I asked the guy at the studio gate for directions for how to get to my audition. And he asked me, are you traveling there alone? Which I thought was a weird question. And I said, yeah. And he said, how old are you? And I was like, 28. And he said, oh my God! I thought you were like a kid. I thought like... Where's this guy's mom? It's one thing to be carted at a bar, which happens to me incessantly, but a lot more upsetting when somebody is literally shocked that I don't have a legal guardian accompanying me somewhere. There's definitely a good side to it in that I can go out for Nickelodeon shows, but the problem is I'm about to get married and married to a very beautiful woman, uh, my fiance, Madeline Walter, and at our wedding, I want to look like a man. I don't want to accidentally get stationed at the kid's table. Although, I will say that if I actually did get cast on a Nickelodeon show, and I started to bring home buckets full of Nickelodeon money, then I don't think I'd really care anymore, and you could put me wherever you wanted at my wedding. But enough about me. Let's turn now to my interview with the very fun, very charming, Anna Kasalka. So what's the youngest you've ever been mistaken for, do you think? Oh, God. Uh, I don't know. I will say that one time, <laughs> or a couple times, I was in, one time I was in Trader Joe's, one time I was at a hair salon, <clears throat> and two people just started talking to me as if I was one of the Fanning sisters. <laughs> like, like <laughs> How did you do that? How did you make that clear? Okay, well, this is this is well, this is just what I deduced. Because one, it was in Toluca Lake the first time it happened, which I think they live around there or did I don't know. Um, and a guy came up to me in the frozen food section of Trader Joe's and he just goes, "I like your movies much better than your sisters." <laughs> and I was like, "Thank you." I don't think she thought you were... I think she thought you were that Olsen who's not 
mm. <laughs> Mary Kate and Ashley. Oh, also. but this was before her. This was oh, like okay. when I first moved here. Because because I get her too. Okay. Which is cool because she's great. Uh, but this was before that. But maybe they were just. Do you look like a fan? I don't know. Like I've been told that. But I don't really I just it. can't even picture what Dakota Fanning looks like. Just real pale blonde and blue eyes. So those those are the things we have in common. Let me common. get it out. Those are, they're also from Georgia, which is weird. Because you wouldn't expect that. They seem very educated. I have to look at Dakota Fanning. Right now. <laughs> okay. Also, my hair was blonde. This, okay, this looks like your sister. Okay, well. I wish. Kali. So this guy likes your movies better. <laughs> What's Dakota Fanning's sister's name? L. Ah, L. Fanning. And she's like 12 years old. I mean, <laughs> they all, <laughs> they both seem very mature for their age. And I was probably buying a bunch of garbage frozen food. So it seems like I was much younger. Just like those mini pizzas. Yeah, <laughs> buying garbage food like L. Fanning always does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been his first clue. Uh, this girl looks poor and is buying frozen <laughs> food at Trader Joe's. It's definitely not a millionaire <laughs> actress. Um, yeah, and then, oh, and the other time at the hair salon, this woman, I think, was drinking wine, so, you know. <laughs> she's and, already out of her mind. <laughs> yeah, she's losing it. She's getting a blowout, and it was in Studio City, which, again, is, like, in that area. I think they went to school in Studio City, because the girl I tutored went to school with them, and, you know, made a point to be like, we go to school with celebrities, we can help you, and it was gross. And I was always like, no thanks. So this woman in the hair salon also said, you're Elle mm. Fanning? She said something in regard, I cannot remember exactly what she said, but it was along those lines of something about like, you and your sister are great. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, thank you so much. I just take it, you know? She may have been so out of her mind at that point. She just was thinking she was your mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally and then, making And I'm just egotistical enough to think that, oh, she must <laughs> assume that I'm a very talented and beautiful actress. <laughs> oh, another person oh, mistaking God. me for a fanning. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I just have this, like, <laughs> lunacy where I think that, uh, that I'm one of the fanning sisters. Or I'm just <laughs> building these puzzles of, yeah, everyone thinks I'm a fanning. Uh, yep. Uh, but, I feel like you should start pitching your, like, Hannah Montana show, <laughs> where half your life you're Hannah, and half your life you're Elle Fanning. I do feel like maybe, since they're from Georgia, oh, no. I could be a long-lost Fanning, and they're just like, leave that one behind. <laughs> <laughs> leave her in Georgia. She's terrible. <laughs> Make that your new Twitter handle, Rejected Fanning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that could be a web series or something. Let's do it. I would get a cease and desist, probably. You're good. You're golden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you were born in Georgia originally? Yeah. I lived uh, there where? my whole life. Okay. I mean, up until now. Up until like 18? Up until, up until college. I went to college <laughs> in Atlanta. And then, I was born in Macon. And then, went to Georgia Tech Graduated early, so I could come out here. Cool. Um, yeah. What's making Georgia like? It's uh, it's mm, small. It's <laughs> it's not like dirt roads and farms, although there are those. <laughs> we uh, we have stoplights, and a bunch of churches, a Walmart, Cracker Barrel. We have a mall and a movie theater, what and that's the, like it. Do, are the accents thick on those people? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, like my mom, my whole family, they have accents. Can you imitate it at all? Yeah, I can. I mean, my mom talks like this. Anytime I talk like my mom, I have to go into it. And she's going to be mad that I did that, probably. And I feel like I still have an accent. It comes out, especially when I go home. Have you had to try to get rid of it? Oh, yeah. When I first moved here, I met with a guy. Well, I met with a couple agents, and they were like, you sound insane. Get out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh, my gosh. I met with... Dakota Fanning's agent when I first moved here. And yeah, and they were like, uh, what? No. You're, what are you doing? You're too old and you sound crazy. <laughs> um, and then I met with this voice coach and we met one time. We recorded it on like an old school tape recorder and I, and I just listened to that over and over again and, and tried to do the vocal exercises to get rid of it. And I remember. <laughs> like a couple weeks after I moved here, 
I changed my voicemail because I had mailed a bunch of headshots and stuff out to try to get an agent. And I wanted to sound professional and not deter people from signing me if I yeah. had this like hick hick voicemail and my mom the first time my mom called me and got my voicemail she i just had like a minute long voicemail of her just laughing hysterically at my accent really because it was <laughs> yeah because it's such a turn i guess yeah and she was just like ah! <laughs> and then she tried to imitate it and she still will try to she like mocks my non-accent so hi this is hannah <laughs> um it, yeah she tries to to hide it it's unconscious now doing your voice or you're a little bit still doing the voice of somebody who's not Southern? <laughs> I think I'm a little bit still doing a voice of somebody who's not Southern, especially uh, lately. I've just, I think I've been lazy about it and I went home recently and if I hang out with like Drew or Melissa, it doesn't really have an accent, but whenever we get together for some reason it just like comes out. Uh, yeah, so I have to be conscious of it sometimes. <laughs> or people will be like, where are you from? And then I'm like, oh, sh I gotta tighten, tighten up. <laughs> and what were your parents like growing up? They were young because they were high school sweethearts. I They had me when I, they were 16. So <clears throat> it was a little non-traditional upbringing, I guess. They were never married or whatever, but they were always like friends and around. So I just got to... I could just see my dad whenever I wanted, or we never, they never did like, this is his weekend and this is your mom's weekend, it was just kind of like, I didn't understand that, that that's how things worked until later, like when yeah. people were like, oh that's weird, <laughs> like you don't have a, your dad's weekend or your mom's weekend, I was like, no. It was more fluid. Yeah, it was just like, um, which is cool, I guess, <laughs> they were, I don't know that they got along, like two weeks ago my dad got married, and for the first time. Congratulations. Yeah. And my mom did, she's a hairdresser, and she did the whole bridal party's hair and, like, came to the wedding. So... That's really cool. Yeah, so it's like... And what does your dad do for a living? He, now he works for DirecTV, just as, like, a, I don't know, he's, like, a manager or something. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad? No, that's I don't good. know what he does. He used to be, like, a technician, and now, and he got, like, promoted to do something in the office. You know cool. what I mean? So... And do you have any brothers or sisters? No, it's just me. But I guess, well, now I have two step siblings. As of like a week ago? <laughs> yeah, which is weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Because my whole life, uh, I never had anybody growing up. And my mom got remarried when I was like 13. And my stepdad had never been married before or had kids. And so people kind of were like, you know, they might have kids, and what's that going to be like, and whatever, <laughs> which would have been fine, I guess, but definitely weird, I think, because once you're 30, it's like you're already pretty much, you're done, Yeah. you know, <clears throat> but... You mean, like, you're unmess upable at that point? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not going to be jealous of a yeah, new baby I, as a 13-year-old? Yeah, yeah, I don't think, as a 13-year-old, if you're jealous of a new baby, then you've got issues, <laughs> although <laughs> maybe I would have been, I don't know. <laughs> Are you jealous of your new step brothers <laughs> yeah. and sisters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very <laughs> jealous. My mom did seem jealous of my stepmom, which is also weird to say. Uh oh, she's gonna be mad. I don't. Need, I doubt she'll listen to this. <laughs> Even my mom won't listen to a podcast with me. But uh, she was last year. I spent Christmas with them. Not even Christmas Day. Just like a couple of days after Christmas, because they live a little bit further from my town. So. Anywho, I spent Christmas with them, and she was like, well, what are you and Cheryl doing? Like, was kind of, <laughs> like, jealous about it. And my dog was in the wedding, too, because it was just, like, they just wanted it to be kind of fun and not serious and whatever. Yeah. Um, and so the dog was in the wedding, and my mom's like, oh, well, she sure knows how to get to your heart. He's like, <laughs> like, like, I'm jealous about it. I'm like, mom, I'm a, I'm a woman. Like, I, can't, I'm not, I don't even live there anymore. She's not like taking me from you. So it might have been harder for my mom than it would have been for me. If that makes but, sense. Yeah. Um, what kind of kid did you feel like you were? <laughs> Just a weirdo. Uh, I not being around kids a lot. I was not like a kid kid you weren't why weren't you around kids a lot just because I was an only child and 
yeah, so, and I didn't have, I had one cousin, and we were pretty close. We were, like, a month apart in age, so we were pretty close. But <clears throat> I was, like, w either with adults or by myself a lot. Or in school, like, because you did go to school, right? <laughs> yeah, I did go to school. No, 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 I lived with wolves. I was raised by wolves. Um, I did go to school, and I would get in trouble because I didn't like the other kids a lot. Like, this makes me sound crazy, probably. It doesn't. <laughs> but <laughs> my mom told me in first grade I had a teacher that I loved, Miss Thompson. She was, like, my favorite teacher. And she told my mom that whenever we would stand in line, I would, like, stand away from the kids. Like, <laughs> like everybody would be in a single file line, and I would just be on the outside of it. And they, I don't know if I didn't like, I think part of it was I didn't like being told what to do. I was very stubborn. And I didn't like the other kids. Like, and I told my teacher that the other kids were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm insane. So that's what that is. Do you remember what that felt like, not liking the other kids? Yeah, it felt, like, lonely and <laughs> bad. It felt bad. And I feel like I didn't really have, like, a cool, like, childhood. Me and my cousin had fun. I remember playing with him and, like, whatever. We would do kid stuff, like, ride bikes and whatever. There was a creek behind my Nana's house that had, like, a tire swing and that kind of stuff. But a lot of times it's sleepovers all of the kids my age would be like hanging out and I would find myself hanging out with their older sisters or like older brothers and stuff which got weird I think oh interesting because you know they don't they like were the older people were welcoming to it, it wasn't like I was just like hey guys what's up yeah <laughs> uh, what's going on um but the younger kids didn't really like it that I was like not hanging out with them and the older kids were kind of they're not, we're not going to be friends at school. You know, we didn't, like, see each other. Yeah. Do you feel like kids your own age didn't get you? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I posted this, like, really dumb poem that I wrote when I was 10. And it was published, I guess. But it was, like, really dark. And I guess, I don't know if I, I probably should have been in therapy or something. Can you remember any part of it? I have. It's on Instagram. Let's look it up. <laughs> oh, no. Um... But yeah, I think, I think I just felt like older and I hate it if my mom would talk, like my dad never talked to me like a baby, he would just, even as a kid, it, it was just very much, I guess like how parenting is now, you know, mm -hmm. you just would rationalize with your kid and be like, this is wrong, you don't do this, and so I, if, if an adult talked down to me, oof, that, I hated it. Okay. You want to respect. Yeah, I just want to respect. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an old soul, I guess. I see. I'm a yeah. lost fanning. What? I'm a lost fanning. Yeah. Which doesn't necessarily mean old soul. <laughs> but I think you are an I old think, soul. I think they are old souls. Okay. I don't want to read it. Oh. Can you read it? Or yes. Yeah, okay. I'll read it. Okay. Oh, it was nine. So but you don't mind it being read? No, no, no. I put it on Instagram. It's fine. The old castle. The old castle was worn and the flags were torn. The drawbridge was squeaky. <laughs> And the roof was very leaky. Mm -hmm. Now all the people have gone and left me alone. Oh. It's not the same, but who's to blame? <sighs> That's heartbreaking. <laughs> for a nine-year-old to write. For a nine-year-old. Oh, I was, I mean, that's, it's also really dumb. Did you cry while you wrote that? <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't even remember where I was at there at that point. But when I went home two weeks ago, my Nana brought that out. And they were all loving it. They were, like, laughing. I was like, clearly, something's up. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, uh, I was weird. Um, yeah, you don't read a poem from a nine-year-old where <laughs> the words are, now all the people have gone and left me alone. <laughs> and not go. <laughs> and I can't imagine a group of people just laughing at that. No, I think, I think they were concerned, but... But also, I think, I mean, I was fine. I yes. definitely, I was more brood, or wanted to be more brooding, or so. I think I wanted to be deeper than I was. There's sort of this, like, wanted to be respected. <laughs> and I just, I wanted to have this, like, tortured artist thing, but I didn't. I just had, like, a nice life. And got pretty much everything I wanted. <laughs> 
<laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, I mean, my parent, my mom was a hairdresser and like pretty much a single mom. So it wasn't like, and I went to public school. It wasn't like, you know, I had the nicest stuff. But at the time, I mean, when you're a kid, it was like, I got to go to drama camp and take dance class and, you know, a lot of kids aren't afforded that kind of stuff. But I think, yeah, I think I just wanted to be deeper, <laughs> deeper than what I was. Still, still want to. Um, want to be taken more seriously, I guess. <laughs> do, you, do you remember, uh, so you were friends with your cousin. Yeah. Uh, who was the first friend other than that who, like, really meant a lot to you? Mm, I had a friend from church, <clears throat> this girl Jennifer Howard, who we were, like, pretty much inseparable when we were kids, and she was, like, the first friend that was kind of, like, goofy, too. Like, it, I was always kind of, like, shy and didn't really, I don't know, I was never the kid that was, like, perform, you know, performing and, like, talking in class and, like, class clown or anything like that, but she was kind of that friend, and I loved that. I was like, ooh, that's, like that's cool. Like, she would be in church and just, like, say say something insane, and I'd be like, yeah, she's cool. I <laughs> that would reminds do me it. of uh, Eugene Levy and, <laughs> I think, Waiting for Guffman when he says, like, I was never the class clown, yeah. but I studied him. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah that's, that was me. So I think I took a lot of her tricks. I never, I never did it because I didn't want to get in trouble. Uh, and But I definitely would, like, wish I could. And you, you said you guys met in church. Mm -hmm. Was mm -hmm. church a big thing for you? Yeah. Um, I went to like a non-denominational church growing up and my Nana was like pretty involved in the church. <clears throat> and yeah, my friend Jennifer, her dad. Who's your Nana? <laughs> Who's my Nana? <laughs> Is that your mom's mom? <laughs> That's my mom's mom. That sounds like a fun <laughs> podcast. Who's your <laughs> Nana? <laughs> um, and this is the part of the show where we ask everybody, who's your Nana? There's like a little piano song plays. <laughs> who's your Nana? <laughs> <laughs> and my Nana is my mom's mom. She's great. And she was like really involved in the church. She works for the church. She's a pastor now. And so we would, yeah, we would go on Sundays and when I was in middle school, there was like a youth group or whatever. And that was like the thing to do. <clears throat> and we weren't great. I mean, growing up in a non-denominational church, I'm happier that it was that versus like Southern Baptist or mm -hmm. something because our church was pretty open and cool, especially for Georgia and yeah. People wore jeans, you know, uh, Did you, are we you, raised our hands. Do you still consider yourself a Christian today? Uh, was my Nana listening? <laughs> my Nana <laughs> might um, Your Nana what? My Nana might be listening, so yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nana, we have a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a crown put on my head. <laughs> uh oh, now I'm being crucified. <laughs> <laughs> this turns into that weird Norm McDonald podcast where we just talk about spiritual stuff. Uh, I don't really know. I'm glad that I was. I'm glad that I was brought up that way. I guess I should say. But it's yeah. Glad that you did. You were born. My dad wasn't, so it was sort of I got the caveat of that, and then my dad being like, "Well, a bunch of men wrote that book, and it's kind of just stories." But now maybe my dad's religious too. I don't know. It's very weird. Um, do you <clears throat> do you consider yourself spiritual? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I guess. I mean, I like I like the traditions, and I don't go to church. But do you tend to go to sleep at night feeling like <laughs> there's a big G up in the sky? <laughs> big G. Uh, uh, no, I want to take the like Stephen Hawking approach of like we don't know what's out there. So it's, it, I'm definitely wouldn't consider myself an atheist because that means that there's proof that nothing is out there and the world is too big and 
Do you know what I'm? Oh, what absolutely. I'm to say? Yes, I like um, that. I, I like I like exactly how you feel. Do you Do you want me to take this out because of your nana? <laughs> This part of who's your nana got dark. No, it's fine. You can leave it in. It's okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, she. I just won't tell her. To listen to it. She's already embarrassed by most of the stuff I've done. <laughs> I mean, I did a show called Filthy Sexy Teens, and she had. Is that not very Christian? No, it was not very Christian. And my mom was like, oh, "Well, we. I'm just gonna tell people it's called Pretty Young Girls." And I was like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> mom, that's way worse." <laughs> mom, that's weird. The <laughs> mom, that's weird. Uh, and two. That's not the name of the show. If they try to watch that show, they're probably going to get a porn. I mean, they probably would have, if you search your DVR for filthy, sexy teens, you you probably got a porn too. But mm -hmm. but also our show was like on there, but <clears> way <throat> on the bottom. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and I, and I did True Blood. And, and I think that was disappointing for my Nana. Because <laughs> I said, fuck. Oh. But isn't there and some kind of like Christian backbone to all vampire stuff? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. There. Uh, yeah. It was that show got pretty pretty wild. It jumped the shark, I think. How to get wild? I mean, just like I was a fairy. There was like werewolf. It was. You were a fairy. Mm-hmm. And I was. It's just a super sexual. Like every. It was just an excuse to like. Have people naked, I think. <laughs> I think I got killed off that show pretty much because I wouldn't show my boobs. <laughs> was Which that, I'm fine. What was the... Was that because of your Nana that you wouldn't show your boobs? <laughs> I just was like... Uh, I don't want that out there. It's a thing that's like... I don't know. Is it worth it? That people... my People that I like, went to high school with or whatever can just Google my boobs? That's weird. I don't know. I guess I think too far in advance for things. Like, if I'm... If I make it. I can see that. But, may, but probably if it was, like, in a more tasteful kind of thing, mm -hmm. the math would maybe be different. Yeah, like, I auditioned <clears throat> for Gone Girl, and they were like... I got a call back, and they're like, if you get... You have to agree to say nudity. You'll do nudity. And I was like, Okay. Like, sure, I'm selling out. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's Jeff Adventure and ben, ben Affleck, of course. Right, it's the difference um, between having yourself be a part of, like, a movie that's gonna yeah. be something really cool. And, and Vampire Diaries is cool, too. Yeah, but it's still... Well, True Blood. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. whatever yeah. yeah, it is, it is. And the girl who did it, it's like, it's fine. I mean, she's... And, like, mm -hmm. she's booked way more stuff now than I have. So it makes me feel like, oh, man, I should have... Should have just done it, right? I can't believe I called it vampire there. <laughs> no, it's perfect that you did. It's perfect that you did. <laughs> but no one cares. I don't know. That was the thing, too. It was like, no one cares. Um, it's weird. I go back and forth on it. Like, I don't know. It would have to be something that I would feel like, oh, yeah, this this part is so cool, or I love this director or the script or whatever. Yeah. And even then, I felt weird about it. I was like, oh, yeah, my Nana's can I have to go see my boobs in a movie? That's weird. That's all. That's all I think about is my nana. <laughs> What's my nana gonna think? Well, I'm go You need to bring her up on this show. Who's yeah. your nana? Yeah. yeah. I want to know if everybody else talks about their nana. This um. Yeah, but I guess, and I think even doing this podcast, I'm like, oh man, anything I do, I think way far in advance. Like I get way ahead of myself. But that's, that sounds like a okay quality. Yeah, yeah. But at the time, I think... Because I've, I've done things that I don't like. Like, I did this really terrible independent movie when I first moved here. Because my agent was basically like, well, who do you think you are? Because <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't think it's good. And he was like, uh, well, you, you have zero credits. And, like, you're doing it, basically. Um, and I was like, yeah, 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 okay. But I don't... I don't think it hurt me, but it is one of those things that... Uh, I'm not proud. <laughs> I'm not proud of. I didn't show my boobs. Um, but it was like more sexual than you'd want to be. It wasn't even sexual. It was just like dumb. It was. Just you just so, did a piece of garbage. <laughs> yeah, just garbage. And I was bad. Like this was. I was pretty bad in it. I feel like so. Based on how it was cut together. Just, like, no, I was just a bad actor. Okay. I was just bad. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready to like be on camera yet. I feel mm -hmm. like I thought I was. But maybe that helped you grow into. Yeah. Do you feel like you had any kind of evolution in your teen years or like, uh, let me rephrase that. 
<laughs> How do you think you changed as a person in through your teens? Oof. Um, as opposed to when I was a kid and like writing sad poetry, or you, yeah, did you stay basically the same person, or was there any kind of evolution? Mm. Like out of the ordinary. <clears throat> no, I think I stay pretty much the same person. I again still didn't feel. I never like had like a wild teenage phase like I always I didn't really like I never drank in high school or like partied or did drugs or anything I was just kind of like I felt like it was really dumb again I just felt like <laughs> the people my age that were doing stuff I was just like that's stupid that's just I felt older than I was always I just I felt like I can't wait to be like done with this. If that castle poem is a good <laughs> indication of who you are at nine, <laughs> is there anything else you remember writing like at 16 or 17 or 18 that oh, speaks boy. to who you were? Uh, I think I was too embarrassed to like express myself in that way when I was that age, which is a bummer because it's taken me this long and I still don't feel like I don't know, I'm embarrassed to, like, do anything, <laughs> like, even acting, I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I was, like, 18 when I first, like, took an acting class because I had always wanted to do it, but I was still just kind of, like, no, I'll embarrass myself. So, <laughs> so no theater up till 18? No, and even, I've never done theater, which is... But no acting? No, no. I mean, um. I did plays, that's not true, I was a dancer, so I did, like, musical theater, um, and I always wanted to do just traditional theater but one I was like in all these AP and like college classes and taking dance like every day and just too embarrassed to do it. <laughs> well, so what musicals did you do growing up? I did Music Man and we did every year we did this musical called The Holiday Spectacular which is like the Christmas Spectacular in New York. It's just an, a ripoff of that <laughs> show like an exact ripoff and I would be I would play Rocket, which was super fun. And so you have to kick really high? Yes. I'd have to kick really high. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a friend that could kick herself in the face. What a, so, what a skill. What a skill. <laughs> can you come pretty close? <laughs> I can go, yeah. At the time, I could get pretty close, <laughs> which I thought was, like, really cool. I was like, Psh, I'm cool. And also, this friend, we were, everyone, she could have been a real rocket. Like. She think about it? She thought about it and then never did it. Was she the right height range? Yeah. She never did. I think at one point she like went to New York and didn't audition, like just like got there and everything and then didn't do it. Which is weird. And now she's like a nurse and married and has a baby and she's great, but But don't you I wanna know. see the version don't of you, her life where she's yeah, a rocket? Yeah, I kinda wanna see that version. Um Yeah, so not many people in my town like pursued anything artistically. I mean, none, none did. <laughs> but did you have that hope inside you? Like, yeah. I want to be an actor? Yeah, I did. I mean, based on nothing. I literally did, hadn't even... I'd done it enough that I thought, like, oh, this is fun and it's interesting and it's, like, scary and... But, but no one does it. You know what I mean? Like, I just thought, like, oh, it's, like, a... just a cool thing that I like to do, but you can't... You can't do that, you know. Were, were there things that you especially loved, like movies or TV shows that have been inspiring to you? <sighs> I mean, when I was a kid, like, young, I loved, like, all that. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Keenan and Kel. Um, and this sounds super inspiring. I, I grew up, like, watching, like, garbage stuff. I'm really embarrassed. Like, now... Yeah, when I you saw Keenan and Kel, you <laughs> knew you had to be an actress. <laughs> It was horrible. I can't tell that on Letterman. <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, but no, I wasn't very, like, cultured as a kid. Um, my my parents weren't... I'm kind of mad at them for not showing me, like, cool old movies or anything. And and because as an adult, now that I'm into it, I go back and I've watched all of these things that I feel like I missed out on. Um, also, from the South, people don't really... don't care about that kind of stuff. So, I just... I don't know. I don't know. I love. I just loved how a movie like made me feel. I just like, oh, I can watch this thing and and I believe it and it's cool and I don't know. That's very cool. Yeah. So that was what I liked about it. I guess. Do you have I mean, any actor heroes? Man, 
then... Other than Kel. <laughs> you know, Kel, my dog. Big, he's got the big G in the sky. Uh, I think he's a pastor now, right? That's oh, I, I think so. That's what I heard. Yeah, other than Kel and Amanda Pines. <laughs> Um, no, I love, well, Amy Poehler, of course, and Philip Seymour Hoffman, oh gosh, there's a lot of, I don't know, I like people that, that are surprising, does that make sense, that don't, don't just do one type of thing. I also yeah. like people that, like, make their own stuff, I find that really inspiring, because it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, so hard. Um, like Amy Poehler. Like Amy Poehler, yeah. And she's great. She's a good example because it's like, anytime you talk about acting, it sounds so douchey. I feel like there's no way to talk about like the process or like what inspires you without sounding like just gross. Yeah, I see no, that. There's no way around it. Um, but she seems so nice and like down to earth and has sort of combated that. I mean she's a like super famous movie star and she still just seems like she's kicking it with her buds. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. She doesn't seem arrogant or like pretentious at all which That is cool. Is cool. Um that's rare I think in actors. What was your college you went to? Georgia Tech. And no arts. <laughs> no arts. Okay. Not really. So you didn't start taking acting classes mm -hmm. there. I did, but not at the college. Like, um, the college, that school I went to is known for being an engineering school. And there's, there's an arts program, but it's pretty much like non-existent. And again, I was still too embarrassed. It was like, I thought about signing up for the drama club and I was like, mm, no. <laughs> and, but there was, Atlanta was starting to get productions filmed there because of tax breaks, and so I knew that. Like One Tree Hill? Yeah, like One Tree Hill. That shot in North Carolina, and that was my first job ever. So what did you do on that? I had one line, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this is it. I am doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to quit college and like go move and do a show, but like, still going to be cool and be like, sorry guys, got to defer Got to defer college because I'm <laughs> on a TV show. Uh, did not happen. <laughs> what was way. your line? Oh, God. Uh, I don't remember. Do you remember the kind of thing you did? Yeah, I played an actress auditioning to play a part in a movie they were making about their lives. So the show had been on like a while at that point. And I think the guy... <laughs> it hit that. <laughs> it hit that like in part of any show <laughs> where they have to start making a show about the show. Yeah, it's very meta, and uh, I didn't tell anybody about it. And then, like at the time, I was in a sorority, and a, c a couple of girls in the show or watched the show, and well, one I thought I would get cut, and then two I thought. I'm already don't really fit in here, and I don't want to stand out anymore, um, or call any more attention to this thing that I, I don't think I told anybody that I wanted to do it at all, um, and so I was worried about that, and then a girl came up to me, and was like, ah, there's a girl on the One Tree Hill commercial that looked just like you, I was like, oh, that is so weird, that's weird, and then the next week after it aired we had chapter which was like a weekly meeting i don't know if you know it's just like a weekly meeting with the whole sorority and each week they gave out like an award for like who it was called the alfie because our symbol was a lion and it was his name was alfie and whatever it was just stuff lion that they would give out usually because somebody did something like philanthropic or made really good grades or like got a scholarship or whatever something worthwhile and they gave it to me for appearing on one tree hill <laughs> so i had to get up in front of the whole chapter which i don't think everyone knew at that point that i had done it and then i had to like accept this award and then everybody knew the cat was out of the bag and what was your speech i don't think i did a speech i think there was just like everyone was like yay 
<laughs> you know, and I just like had to hold this lion, and then I had to talk to people afterwards, like while holding this like big stuffed lion and <laughs> being weird. Um, did it say? Did the lion say for being on One Tree Hill on it? <laughs> no, I wish. I wish it did. It was like a thing. I had to give it back the next week so they could give it to the next one. Okay. Who like really <laughs> deserved it. So where did you go from winning your Alfie <laughs> to uh, <laughs> what happened after that? Oh, uh, was immediately hated by everybody. <laughs> so oh, did that? Do you think that the Alfie for One Tree Hill had a... Oh, adverse effect on making friends? I think I already didn't really... I wasn't really close with people because I didn't join my first year. So, because I thought like, oh, sororities aren't for me and that's dumb. I don't want to do that. And then going, and then I went through my freshman year and made like zero friends. I made friends with one girl who was in the sorority and she encouraged me to join because at my school there was no girl. There was like very few girls. The ratio was like one girl to every three guys. And... It was just kind of, it was just separating. We're like in the middle of a big city and I don't know. So it was hard to like meet people and mm -hmm. anyways. Would you have liked to have more friends at that school? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Was, my first year was like real sad because one, I like didn't, I wanted to be in LA and doing acting and even though I had no real <laughs> training or anything, but I just wanted to like be pursuing it. I felt like, oh, this is like. I'm just wasting time and I'm sad and you know I don't I don't have any friends and yeah I think I and I had not like saying I didn't have I had like a couple like pretty close friends that I still keep in touch with you know but uh but yeah it wasn't like the, there are girls now that are my age and younger that were in my pledge class because I so I pledged my second year so those girls were mostly freshmen and I was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. So they were like all in classes together and whatever, like, who's this weird old girl? <laughs> <laughs> and I never really got close to them. And then the girls who were my age had already like been through a year of like bonding together. And yes. they were like, who's this weird old girl? And, uh, yeah, so I never really like got, I was like in between both of those, if that makes any but sense. But it, it just feels kind of interesting. Like it feels like growing up you kind of felt like you weren't in the exact right place. Yes. Uh, and then you went to college and you wanted to be out in LA. Yeah, I was still, <laughs> which sucks because like my Nana would tell me, again, who's your Nana? <laughs> Back to my Nana. My Nana would tell me like, you need to enjoy where you're at now. Like quit trying to focus on where you want to be and enjoy where you're at now, which is a great lesson. And it's also a good lesson now as an actor because, or performer or whatever, there, I'm definitely not where I want to be, but it's, I, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm doing it, I'm surrounded by people yeah. that are doing it, and I like, and, you know, I finally have, like, a community that I'm a part of, and, and, and yeah, it's great. You're finally where you want to be. I'm finally where I want to be. So what was moving like? Um, well, I came out here... I had some family friends who had already, they lived here, it was two brothers and they lived here and um, they were going to Sundance and they were like, I just graduated and they were like, you should come with us to Sundance and then afterwards you can stay and kind of stay in LA for like a week or whatever and look at apartments or that, meet with agents nice. or whatever. So yeah, it was really nice and... I did that, and then it was, it was, I was toast. Like, I came out here, went to Sundance, which was such a, like, thrill, I guess. You know, we're sitting, you're, like, in this crazy place that, I don't know, it just feels like... Bubbling with creativity. Just bubbling. Yeah, I'm trying not to sound like an asshole right now, but there's, you can sound no, like an there's asshole. no way I'm not going to. I think it, with um, how many times you've said, I'm trying not to sound like an asshole... <laughs> You can now, you've now given yourself full permission to say whatever you want. <laughs> okay, okay. Because you're so self-aware of being an asshole. Phew. Uh, I realize I'm going to sound like an asshole, but yeah, it's just like exciting and creativity and there's actors and writers and just, uh, I was on the cusp of, <laughs> of creativity. <laughs> and it was such a like culture shock from, from Georgia to there. Um, and I, again, I felt like all these people are doing this and it feels cool and like this is what I want to do and uh 
it, yeah, and you're seeing all these cool movies, and you, and, yeah, I really got the bug, I guess, if you would, <laughs> like, um, and then I went back to LA, and I started, um, we basically just, like, hung out, we, I don't know, we went to Arclight, and whatever, Runyon, and that kind of stuff, and then I didn't, I met with that agent. How did you get that meeting? I just mailed my headshot to them. Whoa! Yeah, I That's did. crazy that that works. Yeah, no, it's insane. That's what I did. That's how I got an agent. And that's how I met with, like, I met with a lot of people that I should not have met with. Uh, just from sending your headshot just, around? Yeah, like, old, I was, like, old school Hollywood, like, a black and white movie, like, mailing my headshot out to people. I mean, it definitely, the, I don't know what the percentage was of the, how well it worked versus what it did. If it worked at all, exactly. that's surprising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was shocking. I was pretty shocked. Um, I guess I emailed some people, too, because <laughs> it's... Uh, that's how much you'd come into the 21st century. Yeah, I was, I was half and half. I had one foot over the line. But, um, but, yeah, they met with me, had that sweet One Tree Hill credit, and they were like, phew, we got to get this girl in here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I talked that up more than what it was. Which is fine. People do that, you know? <laughs> you made it sound like you were a character added to the last <laughs> season of One Tree Hill. Yeah, and they were like, nobody watches that show, sure. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, she's like the Oliver from Brady oh, Bunch oh, of cool. One Tree Hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't make it sound like that, but I was like, I just appeared on One Tree Hill. Uh, I'm fresh off the boat, which everybody loves. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, and they met with me, and I was just like so... I've never heard that phrase applied to <laughs> somebody who's just moved to L.A. That's, I don't know <laughs> That's usually like a more offensive term. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I think maybe somebody told me that. Or that I mean, you get the phrase, you hear that people are green. Yes. Which I was. I was like very green. And I was told that a lot in meetings. So like, you're very green. Uh, come back to us when you're not, I guess. And also that I sounded I sounded crazy and I had to lose my accent. Um, so I did that. And then just started like I got like a survival job. Oh, but I was supposed to go back to Georgia, so the week was up, and I was supposed to go back home to, I had an internship waiting for, like an unpaid internship. Where? In Atlanta. So I didn't really have But anything. for what? It was at like a PR firm that um, promoted movies, like they did, it was like, it was my way of rationalizing, like this is a thing... And they also taught us this in business school. They're like, what's the thing that you like? Like, do you like baseball? Yeah, okay. Can You're never going to make it as a uh, in the major league. So sell baseball cards. So sell baseball <laughs> cards. <laughs> Market baseball cards. And so that was my thing. I was like, okay, well... Yeah, I like acting. I'm never going to make it. Uh, um, but I can market it, so cool. So I got an internship at this company that... I um, can't think of the movie they did at the time. I'm trying to think of like the big... Because I worked there for like a week before I left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just a lot of emailing like movie theaters and setting up screenings and, at like colleges and whatever. Um, it was very like mind-numbing and not cool. It's not like... It's not cool at yeah. all. I mean, it didn't feel satisfying at all. It just made me wish, like, oh, I wish I was doing that instead of this. Right, those tangentially related things <laughs> yeah, like, end up not being as oh, fun. Oh, I have to, like, go watch an actress give an interview about a movie she's doing? That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't make me feel like shit at all. Um, but, yeah, I, so that was, like, all I had to go back to. And my family and people that I loved and cared about, I don't want to tell them. Like that. It definitely was a hard decision, but I'd always want to do this, and I felt like this is my chance. And the people that I was staying with told me that I could stay with them, just like crash on their couch while I got my feet under me. And so I was like, okay. So the night before I was supposed to leave, I called my mom and my boyfriend at the time and told them I wasn't coming back, which is really. My mom was like, oh. Of course. She's like, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. And what about your boyfriend? He was like, that's great. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I know you can do it. <laughs> do it. Was there any uh, frustration in his voice? No. He, or he was just really, he no, gave you like a really nice send off? No, he didn't. And I, I mean, I was an asshole. I kind of like dipped out and that was like the shittiest way to move away I think from somebody because it, it it was hard if I would have had to go home and like face to face say I'm moving 
it was really hard. I mean, yeah, it was really hard. And I was young and afraid of confrontation and scared about what I was doing and still cared about him and like wanted to be there. But yeah, so I just did the kind of easy move of... I'm just going to be here for a little while, you know? And, and at the time, that's sort of what I thought, too. I thought, like, oh, you'll come out here, and it'll be great, because he had just graduated, <clears throat> and he had a job, but he was an engineer, and I thought, you can do that anywhere. Um, and, yeah, just did it. <laughs> did your relationship have any, like, other chapter after that? Oh, yeah. we It was, like, back and forth for a long time. And we were together, like, six years. Wow. So it was hard. It wasn't just like, oh, I think I think we both. So were you long distance for a while? For a little, time? yeah, for a little while, and, um, yeah, I mean, in Georgia, like people, all my friends that were with boyfriends and girlfriends for a year or whatever in college were getting engaged and getting married, and people, my family thought that we would get married, and people would just assume that, and so that was hard too because he was like such a part of our family and you kind of have these ideas like I had I felt like I was living like a split life of well I can take this path and like try to be an actor and an asshole <laughs> or I can like stay in Georgia and do the right thing and, yeah and not that I I mean I, <laughs> I would have maybe been happy doing that but I part of me felt like oh I can't not try that life where you get married at 22 is so different than like coming out here and oh. then like not getting married until you're in <laughs> your yeah ever. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Nana, Nana's gonna be mad. Um, yeah, it's very weird. Like people my age are married and have kids and jobs and houses, and I live in an apartment with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and but I have a car, and the kids I babysit think I'm cool and married and have kids, so <laughs> that counts for something. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, but that made it definitely easier. Like, if, I don't know if I would have ever moved out here if they weren't, like, you can stay with us. And, because it's so, I mean, the initial move is what's the hardest, I think. Because my parents were like, no one wanted me to do it. No, no one was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, it was a lot more like, I guess we've got to uh, let her make this mistake on her own. Yeah, and yeah, when I came home for Christmas that first year, everyone was like, well, you you know, you tried. Um, <laughs> so what do you think? When are you coming home? You know? And I'm just so stubborn. That had you had any success by then at all? No. I <laughs> I had an agent, which was, like, pretty That cool. could have been seen as a pretty cool success. Yeah, and for me, as an actor... And it doesn't like, really mean anything to people back home. No, absolutely not. But And it wasn't, like, a good agent. It was just, like, it was an agent. And they got me out, and I... Tested for Power Rangers, the show. Wow. Or I think I... You tested for it. I was That's supposed to big. I was supposed to test, but I turned it down. Because <laughs> I'm... This is this is where I was. I was like, Psh, I'm, I'm going to blow this town out of the water. I don't... I'm not going to yeah. do this shitty show. It was like a really bad... You would have been like in that... What, were you pink? Pink, pink. Power Ranger? Pink Power you Ranger. You would have been Pink Power Ranger forever. <laughs> exactly. Well, that was the thing. Like, where's Amy Joe Johnson? Is that, is that her name? I also watched that show with my cousin. I thought, like, oh, this is cool. Another inspiration for me, Power <laughs> Rangers. Um, but no, I remember the deal was, like, really bad. And even for me not knowing anything, it was, like, you had to sign up for, like, three years. And they got you for movies and you couldn't do anything else. And I just... Uh, and you were betting on yourself. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. But it... I don't know... I guess it paid off, but at the time it definitely didn't. I thought like, oh, next pilot season I'm going to get like a cool pilot. That's another thing I think you'll see over the next few years, like <laughs> how right of a decision that was. I still have that contract because I remember the um, they my agent gave me the contract and they talked about it and they told me, they were like, they didn't discourage me from testing, but they were like, it's kind of a bad deal, but you're new and like you should do it. And I told them no. This is the same people that told me I had to do that terrible movie. Did, so, <clears throat> did you go... Was it like they were offering you the role? No, 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 no. I but they it, were offering you testing. Yeah, you have to sign... So you have to sign the paperwork before you test. Wow. We don't want to go through this effort. If yeah. We're not even going to get this pink Well, Ranger. that's how it is for every test. Is like, because 
if you know someone wants you, then you can negotiate more money. Ah. So they make you agree to like a lesser amount before you test. That's the worst thing about, because I've tested since then, and the worst thing is you have to like sit in this waiting room with a bunch of other people that look exactly like you, sign away more money than you've ever seen before, and think about like, oh, if I got this, my life would be so different. <laughs> and then you have to go in and try to get a thing, try to make that paperwork come true, <laughs> I guess, is, is, which sucks. They literally make you sign it like, right before you go That in, is weird. Which is insane. Um, it makes it so hard. Yeah. But, yeah, so... I'm, I'm wondering this is how it works for me. You've never tested? No. Have I, do I look like I've tested? <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, I've taken the SATs. You're on the cusp. <laughs> um, it's weird. It's... I'm not good at it. I mean, I've tested a couple times, and I'm, I, I'm not good at auditioning either, I feel like, because I get so nervous. I remember the first time I had an audition, I had, like, a callback for... I think it was, like, a CW web series it was not even a cw series web <laughs> and i went in it was the same people that did like gossip girl and some other stuff and at the time i thought that was really cool because i just moved here and i was like cool i'm making it and my teeth were chattering in the room <laughs> like literally the paper was shaking in my hand and my teeth were chattering which is the sign of cartoonish <laughs> nervousness <laughs> cartoonish <laughs> nervousness and then needless to say I did not get it uh how long was it scary out here or like how long till like your first cool thing other than getting an agent um once I found like UCB that kind of <clears throat> made me feel good because I was in acting classes before that um that were just sad and it, very competitive and the people were not cool or nice or you know so what have been the good things for you about ucb it's been like a community yes and what else people the people <laughs> i guess that's a community um yeah it, it's like a group of people that are doing this and sort of not not in the stereotypical way like it doesn't feel i don't know it doesn't People are just nicer and warmer and more creative and funny and that's, I don't know. And in LA you hear so much about people that are, that are jerks and douchebags and like wear sunglasses inside and fake type screenplays at coffee shops, which I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> you do, which is fine. But, uh, but yeah, that it seems less about the like fame aspect of it. Are you still doing a lot of improv? Yeah. I do... I was in a bunch of classes, like, back-to-back. -back. I don't perform as much as I'd like to. Um, it's just... I don't know. I get tired. It's hard to go yeah. to a show late. Was being on a Herald team <laughs> something that, like, was a big hope of yours? Yeah. I definitely... When I, each time I've auditioned, I feel like... Well, the first time I auditioned, I was like... That was, like, a huge goal of mine. And now it's it's definitely a goal, but it, it's not, like, the end-all, be-all that it once was, yeah. I guess. Not to, like, demean it or whatever, but... <clears throat> I f yeah. It's... I don't know. No, it's I feel... Cool... I've, I've, I've auditioned four times yeah. and not made it four times and, like, had different feelings about it each one. Yeah, yeah. Like, each year I go back and forth. I'm like, even this year I was like, maybe I'm not going to audition. But you didn't got a call back. Yeah. Which was nice. That was like a cool thing. And I didn't do well in the callback. I didn't expect to get on a team. Um, but I was kind of okay with it, if that makes any sense. And I don't know if that's just me rationalizing. Like, yeah, I don't need it. I'm cool. I got that Alfie, so I'm good. <laughs> um, I'm still riding that high. Um, yeah, but it would definitely... It feels like a thing that... like Because I've put so much time... Not as much time as, as a ton of people have. I'm not saying, like, I deserve it because I've been here. But it definitely feels like a thing. I don't know if I definitely feel included. Does that make sense? Or it's hard. F I don't tell people, like, even when I work with people and they're like, oh, do you do UCB? And I I feel like I have, I can't just say yes. Mm -hmm. I have to say, 
I've taken classes, <laughs> which feels shitty because it feels like I've done more than that, but maybe not. I don't know because I was I've never been on a team. I think it's all in everybody. Um, you know, I think it, there's I think a lot of people who are, uh, who are part of it who, like. Haven't been on a team. Yeah, yeah. And there's... And I think you don't stop being a part of it when you get kicked off your team. No. Which inevitably happens for yeah, everybody. Yeah, to everybody, <laughs> which sucks. And and there's... The thing, too, that I've realized is, like, there's so many good people. And you, it's such a hard thing to, like, quantify. Like, you, in those callbacks, it's like you're watching hours and hours of people doing shows. And somebody might have a really great night. And the other person might have a really bad night. And... I don't know. You're I think it's more about this is my community. Exactly. Which uh, is, I think has helped me so much. Um, so you've done so many cool like TV and film things by now at this point. <laughs> it feels like what's, um, uh, like you've had a, like a reoccurring role on the Fosters. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. What, what is that? What's the Fosters? <laughs> <laughs> no, what was your reoccurring role? I know, um, I know, uh, what the Fosters is from the posters. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. It's also, the, it's called The Fosters. It's about a foster family, and their last name is The Fosters. Um, That's really true? Yes. That's ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? I no mean, offense to your show. No offense to the show that's paying my bills. Um, it's, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It's for kids, though. It's like teens. But I, it is cool to be a part of something that... It doesn't feel like your stereotypical teen show. I mean, they, they try to, like, dive into deeper issues, and it's, you know, there's a lot of women in the cast. It's the first time I've ever worked with women directors. Like, I've worked with now several women directors, um, which is cool, and, um, yeah, it's been it's been fun. I hate my character. So who, is, who is your character? I'm just, like, the mean girl at school. I'm are you a high school student? Yeah, I'm a high school student. And I'm... How mean are you? So mean. Like, Give an example of a mean thing you did. Oh, God. Well, the girl... Okay, Mariana is one of the foster children on the show. And she, in real life, and her character, she's very, so sweet. So it's really hard to be mean to her. My character is just the worst. <laughs> like... Uh, I'm trying to think. So you dunked Mariana's head in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Like, I just mean, I say mean things to her. She pretty much, she dyed her hair blonde, and she's Latin, so she had dark, beautiful, like, black, dark hair, and she dyed her hair blonde because she felt like she needed to fit in. I'm the captain of the dance team, so she felt like she had to fit into the dance team. I told her that her hair, like, looked bad. I've told her <laughs> that she's, like, a bad dancer. Um, <laughs> just the word. Like you I said, some things that are vaguely racist. Yes, I have said she. I have said racist things. I just is, said that as a joke. No, now it's, it's true. Tough. In the first episode of the show, I said like she only made the team because she was Hispanic, which is horrible. That's a horrible thing. It's <laughs> horrible. They shouldn't allow that on TV. No, no. And then like, and I'm the poster child of that, and I'm already. I'm like, oh great, people are already. I already think I'm racist because I'm from Georgia. So, <laughs> um, and now I'm like on camera saying this. Yeah, my character's just like really bad. So it's hard to play that. Do you feel like you get typecast more than just in the Fosters as uh, jerks or? Yeah, yeah, but I never have booked them. Like, I've auditioned for jerks all the time. You just time. see a lot of, like, people's, like, wheels in their head turning and being like, this could be our jerk. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I get called in based on my picture because I'm blonde, and I think people think jerk. I see blonde, <laughs> they think slut, jerk, that is the, the two parts that I get called in for usually. <laughs> um, Ever jerk slut? <laughs> yeah, or jerk slut. Um, and... Yeah, so it's not super fun, especially if you're trying to do comedy. There's not really many roles. And if you were writing a, like, a movie for yourself, mm -hmm. what do you think your character would be? Oh, boy. Like, what do you think you would play best? I, I don't know. I think it, I'm figuring that out because I'm trying to write for myself because it is frustrating when, you're, when you don't get to play the parts that you think that you want to play. And also, I don't even book them because I go in and people say, I'll do the scene. And then in the between the scene parts, I'll talk to the people, the creators of the whoever that's in the room. And they'll go, oh, you're so sweet or whatever. And that 
Oh and man, you're not a jerk at all. I mean, you just you were acting. I was like, yeah, that's the point. Don't you want a real jerk on set? You want to work with a real jerk? That's the thing that I don't understand. I'm like, I feel like that would play to my advantage, which it, I guess it did on the Fosters. But I also, I didn't read for that part. I read for a different part, and she was not a jerk at all. So when I booked the part, I was sort of surprised by it, and. Um, and yeah, and I get notes every time, like, whenever we shoot, they always have to come over and be like, okay, that was great, but you're too nice. You gotta play it meaner. And I'm like, ooh, woof, okay. Uh, great, I'm just a monster. Cool. It, there's no redeeming qualities to, to this character at all. But yeah, I don't know what the part I would play. I guess, I don't know, I would like to play, like, myself. I wish I could yeah. write that. I don't know how to... Maybe that's super boring and egotistical no, me to say. That's kind of what I was asking. But I would like, love what? to just play like a, you know. Somebody who, whose teeth chatter. Somebody <laughs> whose teeth chatter at auditions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's your favorite thing you've done out here? Um, oh, um, recently I did a pilot presentation. Was that Filthy Sexy Teens? I did that too, which was super fun. And yes. before that, that was my favorite thing to play. And she was a jerk, but it was in such a like heightened way. And we were making fun of it, so that was so fun. That's such a cool pilot to have gotten to, shot, to shoot. Yeah. And like an adult swim pilot. Yes. That's awesome. Where it you're was, the lead? Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. It was nuts. I was like, what? what is, but what you did that? another pilot? Yeah, and Dominic Durkis and Sean Clements wrote that, which was super cool. And... Eric Appel directed it, so it was, again, it was, like, cool, like, UCB people, and Haley Huntley was in it with me, and this guy, Ryan O'Flanagan, who's not UCB guy, he's a stand-up, but it was so fun, and it was such a tease, too, because it was, like, two days of just, you know, I was, I was, again, playing a jerk, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I didn't get that part either from Audition Court, I auditioned for Haley's part. But they had seen, Sean and Dom had seen Filthy Sexy Teens. Cool. So they were they were calling me in because they were like, oh, she can, she's a jerk. She can play jerks. And I auditioned to play Haley's part, which was kind of this awkward, I don't know, weirdo. And, uh, which Haley's great. In, but I thought, like, I was so relieved when I got the sides. And I got the audition because I was like, phew. And I read the pilot and I was like, Phew, man, they're not calling me in for the jerk slut. Uh, I probably get to play, like, a cool weirdo. This is great. And I did it, and I felt so good. And I got to wear, like, my own clothes. Like, I have two sets of clothes and ones that I wear for auditions that, you know, when I audition for jerk sluts. And then my normal clothes, which is, like, boy shirts and jeans. And so I got to wear that, which is cool. And then I went in there, and the, I saw a bunch of girls that I usually audition with playing the jerk slut, and I was like, oh, something's off. Like, I don't know, but I thought, I'm cool, they get it. Like That's really cool. Um, but it was still fun to do, because it's like being with people that are cool and do comedy, and we got to, like, improvise, and yeah, so hopefully we'll get to do more of that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, what do you think your biggest anxieties are that, like, carry on to today? Like, just, anxieties you struggle with on a daily basis. Oh, man, just, and, and what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what like, are you doing? But it sounds like you're doing really well. Like, these, I, like, it feels like things are just rolling along really nicely for you. I guess. I guess. Does it, it not feel like that to you? Sort sometimes? of. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Like, like when I was doing True Blood, and then I, right after that, I did Filthy Sexy Teens, and I thought, like, this is it. Like this is gonna be the one it's gonna go and this will be cool and then it didn't they didn't pick it up and so that was kind of a letdown and then true blood i didn't so i played a group of a sister like well can't talk <laughs> i played um a set of triplets and two of us died and then the other one lived and she got to like keep recurring on the show and then she this is on True Blood? Yeah, and then the following season... She so you played three people? No, no, no. I played one of the sisters, and then other two other girls played. But you said they were triplets, so you just looked like them. Sort of. Okay. We didn't even really look like, I guess. And you were fairies. We were fairies, <laughs> yeah. So she... Which means what? Which means we grew up really fast, 
So in the show, it showed us as like little girls, and then we went to sleep. That was part of the joke too. Was like we went to sleep and we woke up as like eighteen year olds, and we were in our like little kid nightgowns again, like trying to be sexy. No, they always have to make it sexual. Um, <laughs> but really, like, that's kind of pervy. It was very pervy. And that, and that was the thing, too, about them wanting to see your boobs. I was like, what? I'm playing... I'm technically a two-year-old. I'm technically a <laughs> two-year-old, you perverts. So, yeah. Um, I In True Blood 2, my nightgown was, like, really short. It was a kid's nightgown. And at one point, I had to cross in front of the camera. And the skirt had, like, ridden up. Like, so my butt was hanging out, <laughs> and there was a teddy bear on the bed, so I just, like, huh. grabbed, I made, like, an actor's choice to grab the teddy bear. Like, I forgot my teddy bear, and I ran out of the room with the teddy bear over my butt. <laughs> good, great choice. So, yeah, yeah, we had fun. Um, but yeah, but so it was hard, because this girl got to, like, keep recurring, and so as we were working, like, we knew that like we're done and she's gonna keep going and that felt that was like a bummer that is and is she like doing well yeah she's doing well still like she got added as a series regular the okay. following year and you're dead and i'm dead i was in two episodes dead um and is it because you grew up too fast <laughs> so i think they were like too fat or did you get hit by a car <laughs> um we got killed by the empire the so, empire the, the Empire. <laughs> the Empire. Wait, is this really the Empire? <laughs> the, yeah, we were at a baseball game. Wait, no, what did you get killed by? A vampire. Oh, a vampire. I wish we were at a baseball game <laughs> and an, um, an umpire said. I thought True Blood was about umpires. <laughs> yeah. No, that's Vampire Diaries. Okay. Oh, <laughs> umpire Diaries. Uh, so that was tough because I was like, oh, you kind of had to... It was a couple of disappointments in a row, and then pilot it was also in the middle of pilot season. So we were and we, these girls that we were, I was acting with were all the same type. We were going out for a lot of the same stuff, getting callbacks for all the same stuff. I think testing for <clears throat> some stuff, and which none of us none of us booked pilots, but it's just hard. It's hard to like not compare yourself to people, um, especially when you're on the same show <laughs> and then it's such a like di literal direct comparison of this person is gets to do more of this show and also probably more stuff um yeah i don't know so it does it's hard to say like i guess com maybe some people compare themselves to me and think like oh i wish i had an agent i wish i was auditioning so um yeah you have to just put things in perspective and hopefully not i don't know for me i have a hard time of not thinking like oh, I've been through X amount of pilot seasons and haven't booked a pilot, or... You do think that. Yeah, yeah. And it feels harder. <laughs> like, every year I feel like, oh, they're going to be they're tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like, no, we can't see her again. Uh, and I'm so, I get so nervous still. Like, part of it, part of it they said, like, last year I, I tested for pilots and they were like, she's, she's good, she's just... Uh, needs to like own the room more or whatever that was like a no and I got which I'll never do like I don't think I'll ever be that like confident <laughs> person that's like cool and calm trying to get like the, my dream job in front of people like I just I don't know I just it just has think, to be the right thing at the right time yeah I just think people I think that all the jobs I've gotten that are cool like that like the pilot presentation I did with Dom and Sean or the adult swim thing is like people that kind of knew me and vetted for me. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. Do you worry about your look changing as you get older? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> it's scary. As a woman, it's like so hard. Um, yeah, I wear sunscreen. <laughs> I don't get in the sun. I don't get uh, surgery or anything, but it's, it's, uh, I'm conscious of it. Especially because I play younger, so I'm with baby literal babies and yes. you're like god damn it they're like 18 and rich and on a show and i'm 100 years old <laughs> and, 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 and not you know you accidentally just said your real age <gasps> oh my god we gotta cut this out ng no good it's not good jane <laughs> <laughs> um where would you uh 
what's your hope for where you are five years from now? Like, what's your dream five years from now look like? Oh, boy. Um, oof. And you can be an asshole right now. I can be an asshole. Okay, great. Um, okay, house in Beechwood. <laughs> your dream is to have a house in Beechwood? No, I don't know. That's where Ryan Rosenberg lives today. Yeah, I would love to live in a in You want to be, in five years from now, apartment. Gonna, hey, no value judgments on Rosenberg. <laughs> Their apartment stinks. I don't think I Does, Do I need to cut that out or that's allowed no, to stay? they know. They know it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I would love to have a house. I'd love to be at a point where I could afford a house. Not even a, not even a, we're not talking a mansion. We're talking just a normal house. Uh, so I would think that would mean that I would be on a show. And I, ideally, I would like to be writing and producing stuff as well. Because um, that's more like satisfying to me. I hate the, I hate the part of like, I hate, auditioning for something that's like, oh, I guess I'll do this because I have to. I don't understand that as an actor or how people can just be straight actors is weird to me because, yeah, it's more fun. I mean, I don't know. It's more fun if you, to do your own ideas, I think. Yeah. Right, and yeah. working with friends too, like if Rose writes a show... <laughs> about a stinky house. About a stinky house, and I play like the kooky neighbor. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I play like their their grandma and <laughs> their nana. <laughs> yeah, their nana. That's my dream. I'm somebody's nana, and that would be fun for me. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you get uh, like recognized as of today or fan letters? I have gotten fan letters. What are those like? Are they creepy or okay? Very creepy. <laughs> Very creepy. And it's, I don't know, I saw, like, they sent me pictures that they just, like, Google image searched, I guess, and printed them. And I don't even know from what. I guess True Blood, some I got for. And then some from that shitty movie I did, it, which is weird. Because I played a cheerleader, and I was like, this is weird. These people uh -huh. are probably perverts. In that movie was not. Oh, and then, good. then they need to go a step further and like make contact <laughs> with you. Yeah, the first one I got when I literally my heart dropped because it came to my mailbox, and but I oh, realized that my you. agent had put it in an envelope and they <laughs> they, they forwarded it. Your to agent me. was like, Hannah must have this. <laughs> they do. They send me that. And I'm like, uh, I mean, they don't have time to go through it, I guess. But it felt weird at first, and it was like a bunch of pictures of me, and I just felt like, oh my god, what? Um, Somebody wanted to send you pictures of you? Yeah, they sent me pictures. Is it with the hopes to, of you autographing them? Yeah, they asked yeah. me to sign them and they sent a self addressed with the stamps. <laughs> they made it easy and I was like, I guess. I mean, that felt weird. That also feels like that person wants to make money on eBay or something. I mean, there was. Or, or do they just want. They, they just were want not high res pictures. Okay, so and they, also, so, okay. <laughs> how much money? No one's going to buy a signed headshot for me. <laughs> like, they're, they're really banking on me. To make it. Like, they're, yeah. they're holding on to that. You're right. This person just needs those pictures. <laughs> yeah. He always got a buzz bed, for sure. Uh, this is my girlfriend. <laughs> he's showing she those, loves me, yeah. so she signs my pictures. <laughs> he's showing those to his Nana, being like, this is her. You're going to meet her soon. Um, but I, got, I went to Disneyland, like, two weeks ago and got recognized for the first time from the Fosters, which was a very weird thing, to even weirder. It was that like is, a that teenage is boy, which I thought, <laughs> I thought, I was giving myself credit of, I was like, oh man, this teenage boy is about to hit on me. <laughs> <laughs> and you were right? No, I was wrong. I was absolutely wrong. He's oh. like, he just wanted to, he was like, are you, are you on the Fosters? <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, oh. It didn't even occur to me that someone would like know who I was. Mm. And he didn't know my name. It wasn't like wasn't like that, but... You, you're still learning the difference mm. between the look of a teenager hitting on you and <laughs> about to talk about the Fosters. About to talk about the Fosters, which I don't know if I'll ever learn that. It's a very distinguished thing. But apparently Disneyland is like a place where people on ABC Family shows get recognized Yeah, I think Nicole Byer gets swarmed oh my in that God, kind of I can area. Oh my God, I can imagine. Yeah, because, yeah, that's their target market right there. They had their rap party at Disneyland, the Fosters did. Oh, cool. Because it's, it's a, like a Disney company. Did they, were they able to close off the park for... There was like a... There's... No, there was like a special area. I think where they do the like rodeo shows or whatever that closed that down. Or That's whatever. cool. Um, 
but I wasn't even good enough to be invited to that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> they called me and were like, are you coming? And I was like, oh, I hadn't heard about it, but yeah, like, yeah, I'd love to come. And then they called me back and like, oh, sorry, um, you, yeah, you can't come, you can't come. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 that makes sense. I get it. I get it. You guys have, you guys have fun. <laughs> it doesn't have to do with how big your character is. It's how mean your character is. Yeah, I don't know. And that was the thing too where I felt like there were other girls like, the choreographer for the dance team got to go, and I didn't, and I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But this guy that recognized me was very nervous, and I think it's because my character's so mean on the show, he thought that I was going to be mean. Oh. So maybe other people have recognized me, and they just think, that girl's a jerk. I'm not going up to her. <laughs> I don't want her to... I'm worried that she's going to make a scene that's <laughs> anti-Hispanic. She's going to be racist <laughs> and mean to me. Uh... But yeah, he was very nice, and I and I was weird. I was like, sorry, I'm being weird because I've never had this happen before. <laughs> like, he was like, he asked me if I was in the Fosters. I said yes, and then we both just kind of stood there silently, and I was like, uh, you watch the show? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I watch my whole family. We all watch it. I was like, cool, cool. <laughs> um, and then he asked for a picture, so, but it was, yeah. Uh, you know. That sounds was, like a nice interaction. Yeah, it was, yeah. And the people I was with, who are, I'm on an improv team with, all just were like, what is happening? <laughs> what is this? Okay. <laughs> if, Hannah, mm -hmm. if, if you could say before we sign off one more thing to your Nana, <laughs> what would it be? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just for everything? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You can also tell her you love her. Yeah, I love you, Nana. <laughs> Thank you. And I hope that I'll be in something that she can tell people at church to watch soon. That's a great aspiration. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's her aspiration <laughs> for me, is to be in something that isn't embarrassing to tell people at church. Power Rangers would have been really cool Power for Ra church. Yeah, that would have been great for church. <laughs> The Fosters is, like, iffy for church, but I think it's good that people at church are, are maybe watching it. It feels like anything that's on ABC Family should be good for church. Yeah, but it deals with, you know... Sexually explicit topics? Sexually explicit topics, homosexuality, you know... Oh, the Fosters sounds like... It's, it's, it's a lot for <laughs> some people, especially in the South, so... Uh, um, if I'm breaking that barrier even a little bit, which... It's a huge stretch to make, but yeah. Um, well, thank you for coming. Thanks uh, for having and me. And doing this. Uh, I really liked learning about you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot I didn't know. I uh, know. I hope. Uh, oh, man. This is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> I don't think so. Bye, Nana. Bye, Nana. Thank you. <laughs> That was my interview with Hannah Kasalka. I had so much fun talking to her, and uh, it feels like she's got some really exciting things ahead of her in her career. If you want to see Hannah perform live, she very recently got onto a used to be mess hall team. Um, we don't talk about it here because it was after this interview was recorded. But anyway, you can see her team, Junk Science, perform live every other Sunday at the Inner Sanctum at UCB Sunset. Special thanks to Casey Trila and Hi-Ho Silvero for all the music in this episode, to my sound editor, Joe Burge, and to my producer, Cece Pierce. This has been On the Cusp. That's your outro music.